Pete never liked to do anything alone. You know, it was either organized, kick the can and get the neighborhood together, play cops and robbers and get the neighborhood together. You know, all of that kind of thing where he could see a group that he could connect with, do something with them, have fun, see an outcome, and then think of something else to do. You know, when you're part of small business the way we were, immigrant family, the business wasn't uh, aloof and separated. The grocery store was a very, very intimate part of our family. Every piece of it, every customer. We worked there. Uh, the experiences of the business were shared. The fact that my dad had to work long hours was well known. Many lessons were learned from there, particularly support of one another, listening to one another, making sure people could accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. Devoutly Catholic, most in the Italian community considered only one place to educate their children, St. Mary's School. It was there that Pete was encouraged to compete and excel with strict Jesuit rigor. And it was there that Pete first fell in love with baseball. He loved baseball. He would take his baseball mitt and ball to work with him at Dad's grocery store and practice with people. Every minute that he had, he would be throwing this baseball just to get better and better and better. He was a really good pitcher. If you got a fastball that moves, yeah, and, and you throw it a little quicker than average, uh, till you, till you talk about big leagues, that's pretty good. You don't need much more. Pete, besides being a, uh, a very good athlete, was also a very uh, exceptional uh, student. He was a leader. He was also the kind of an individual that not only was a good speaker, and could present his ideas uh, clearly so that you could understand them. He was the kind of a person who never talked down to you. He spoke with you. One of the things that stays the strongest with me was his absolute determination to do the things he wanted to do. You pinch yourself when you're first here, but uh, after you've been around, around for a while, you pinch yourself real hard to make sure you, you really are here. It, it's just an overwhelming institution from the point of view of tradition and history. The Founding Fathers, um, in establishing our country with the Constitution, really were unique in what they came up with. The Senate was set up to be, as some said, the saucer to cool the coffee, to calm things down, to be more deliberate. We've, it's a debating body. We talk a lot over here. Well, there's a way we should work with each other. Uh, and that is on the basis that every senator is entitled to the same consideration, to the same privileges. Seven votes. The joys of being a senator are the terrific freedom that you have to do a variety of things. Limitations, there aren't very many limitations in what you can address, what you can try to do. I choose to differ with them. We will move forward, and with this vote, we will move forward. The freedom on the Senate floor is a marvel that makes it the most uh, significant and the most distinct body in the world. There's no one in the Senate or in the House of Representatives that can uh, make the case like Pete Domenici and make it as convincingly and as powerful. And whenever he does, and whenever he speaks about this issue, 
uh, the United States Senate just to respond overwhelmingly. There was a tremendous fire out there in New Mexico. And, and Pete asked me to come out and, and take a look at it, see what we could do to help. And I remember f flying over that fire and landing right there in Los Alamos and see how that fire, saw how that fire was right at the edge of Los Alamos. We were there where the fire was still burning. We didn't wait to go out. And that's Pete Domenici. It is not consistent with reality. Pete Domenici is always looking to the future, how to make things better for now. But even in the budgeting process, it was the budget for the next year, which is the immediate responsibility, but it is the, how that budget plays out over five years and 10 years and even over 20 years that so fascinated his mind is where his genius lies. Senator Domenici's legislative prowess has had far-reaching consequences. As the first Republican Budget Committee chairman, Pete passed 26 concurrent budgets, two of which were the first balanced budgets in 40 years. His reputation as one of the Senate's foremost experts on energy has been fueled by his relationship with New Mexico's two national laboratories. Part of the enthusiasm for the technology of nuclear power and that we ought to continue with other basic research in energy came from the fact that I got to know, learn from, rub shoulders with, become friends of the greatest. They're there in our own state. Probably when we look back on it, it will be as something that we can all say took up as much of my time, energy, and the energy of my staff as any other single thing. Further initiatives that have been enacted through his vision and influence include being the first lawmaker to fund mapping the human genome, supporting alternative fuels research more than 20 years ago, reaching across the aisle to enact far-reaching mental health legislation, actively protecting the closure of New Mexican military bases, and much more. His success is characterized by his inclusive approach to lawmaking and by balancing the needs of the nation with those of his constituents back home. It's just a question of do you want to work that hard? Do you want to push your staff to work that hard? And you know, some way or another, for some reason, that doesn't bother me a bit. It was this good-spirited idealism and practical approach to getting things done that led some back in Albuquerque to believe that politics and Pete Domenici made good sense in the first place. Pete entered the University of New Mexico to study chemistry. He was a good student, had many friends, and was quite a pitcher for the Lobos. Pete told me he needed to get a little workout. Then Pete says, uh, well, I'll, I'll get on the mound and you get behind the plate and you know I'll throw a few to you. And then he started to throw a little harder. And after maybe a dozen pitches and a rising fastball, and Pete, he could throw hard. I had to tell Pete that his workout was over because uh, I really thought I might lose my teeth or something. In college, of course, is when the birthday group got started. The different mothers would have a birthday. Pete's mother and Ralph Matusi's mother. They started calling me Schaeferini. While at UNM, Pete met an attractive young lady, Nancy Burke. We started dating when I was a freshman or sophomore, and he was a junior or senior in college. I did like the way he talked and thought about things. He liked to kind of ramble on about different ideas or circumstances that were going on. It was interesting to be with him. 